Did you know that dreams is the language of God? Bill Johnson, Benny Hinn, and Lou Engel sit on a panel and have a discussion about that. Check it out. Well, these are exciting days. So many things are being fulfilled. Can you imagine God talking to you and somebody goes, oh, that's just God. Do you know that God speaks to us in dreams and in visions? And so many people, not every dream is from God, but when God speaks to us, He'll even speak to somebody who doesn't even know Him and warn them about their destiny so they can turn back to Him. And so many people, you hear what God's saying to them and they share about a dream and they go, oh, it's just a dream. You know, we got to quit saying that because that's the last day's language. When God speaks to us, He speaks to us through His Word, but He also speaks to us through dreams and through visions and I'm living proof of that, and so many people are. As a matter of fact, Lou Engel is talking about that when he's sitting here on a panel. A couple of things that stand out to you, and one thing that stood out to him was the people just saying, it's just dreams. Let's go to Lou Engel right now. Uh, this one's for Lou. I was wondering if you could please expound on, um, you know, how dreams and visions, you know, from God, you know, have correlated in your ministry, how important it is to really steward God's voice in the prophetic, dreams and visions and such as this, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for that question. Yes, yes. That's, that's a sweet spot. Yeah. It's, you know, the last day's language of the Holy Spirit is dreams. That's right. What, we, 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 we said, well, it was just a dream. What do you mean, just a dream? Who knows what angels had to fight through to, to break into your world, to give you their thoughts, and you just say it's just a dream. I think the church needs to stop saying it's just a dream. I mean, what if every teenager had a destiny dream when they were a kid that would hold them in their teenage years because they're just, they don't know who they are. We need, this is the language and the culture of heaven. And so our whole world actually, our whole world is dream. We, we got this quote, if you hang around the dream king, you get into a dream stream, you join yourself to a dream team, and you do the Martin Luther King thing. <laughs> Every, every dream is a potential movement. Sometimes we get a dream, we think it's just for us. I talked to Todd today. He just adopted a child, a, a baby. <laughs> Came out of a heroin um, parents or whatever it was. And immediately I thought, Todd, I see hundreds and hundreds of thousands of babies being adopted because of your story. Because a dream is like a seed. And you stick with that dream long enough, it becomes a tree. And you influence the world. I'll maybe tell a little bit about that story. But this is, in many ways, the call was born out of a dream I had with Benny Hinn. I'm starting to rock. <laughs> dreams, dreams are so profound, they give you divine intelligence. I get the dream. It gives you the secrets for deliverance. The inner heal, you get inner healing in your dreams. I had a dream once, I was wailing in this dream singing, when I find you, I find healing. God was healing me in a dream. You all know this. The, the, and the more you treat it as holy, the more you get. Wow. He who has, more shall be given. So our whole ministry, actually, every, almost every day we meet together, we say, do we have a dream? And because we do stuff with our dreams, rather than saying it's just a dream, we treat them as smart bombs. As intercessory assignments that changed the world. So the call was began, began in many ways, with a, a dream of Benny Hinn. And, and what happened was, uh, in 2003, 
I had started something called Pasadena for Christ. And, and the first day I started this full time, um, I, got invi- I was invited to speak to a group of Taiwanese kids, high school group up in the mountains. And uh, the first night, the presence of the Lord was very strong. You could feel people just weeping and kids. And that night, these kids came to me and they said, hey, we want to do an all night prayer meeting. I said, cool. So the kids prayed and the preacher slept. And I have a dream, though, because God loves me. And he gives to his beloved in his sleep. Come on. Why should we waste a third of our lives without the language of heaven bombarding us? Seriously. And in this dream, I'm on stage with Benny Hinn. And Benny Hinn says, Lou, you're done with the ministry. So I step down off the stage, but I'm filled with joy. I wake up thinking that is really a pizza dream for sure. I mean, what is that? Benny Hinn. I never even had met Benny Hinn. So the next morning, I I remember having the message that would bring revival. It didn't work out. It worked out according to the dream. So right before I get up to preach, suddenly one of these high school kids stands up and starts to prophesy, and the Holy Spirit invades the place. And kids, this is 2003, pre-Toronto. Everyone is being slain in the spirit, laughing, shaking. I'm thinking this is so rude. I didn't get a preach. And I, 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 I'm, I'm saying, uh, literally for two hours, I'm sitting there thinking, this, what is going on? Because I, I was not Pentecostal. I had no idea what this stuff was. <laughs> and finally, I just left. And I went to my cabin and laid down and said, what was that? And the Lord brought the dream back to me. Benny Hinn wrote a book called The Anointing. When the anointing comes... You're done with the ministry, but it's a joyful occasion. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. The deal is this. God spoke to me. This will never be about your preaching. It's what I'll do when kids pray. Little did I know those kids were the Christian club leaders in, in, in their high schools They begin to invite me, and prayer begins to break out among the high schooler kids. Little did I realize that that would be the beginning of a movement called The Call. It started with a dream about Benny Hinn and the power of kids praying, and revival comes when people pray. And it all started with a dream. Come on. Thank you for the question. So let me teach you this. We've started a whole movement called Bound for Life for the ending of abortion. We're really in a critical moment in America. I think adoption is going to explode across America. I think right now we are in a window of time. We're at a window of time for a shifting in this thing right now. And all started, and, I, and then I'll get on this thing, but I get, I get excited about it. You, you hang around the dream king. If you, if, if you hang around Jesus, you're going to get dreams. You just, and you ask for all the time. If you hang around, you join yourself to a dream team. The dreams that he gives to is too big for you to fulfill. You've got to have a team living. I would rather, rather than just having dreams myself, I would like to create a dream community around me. Give permission to the people in your fellowship and church to dream dreams and give them access to you because housewives can change the whole world if they got a big mouth telling the dream. God gave us a series of dreams and we had to walk the trail of tears. 
with the natives, if we were going to deal with the issue of abortion, I, can, I, I won't go into the story, but it's amazing how this unfolded. A young man fasted for four years at Daniel Fast, no meats, no sweets, and dreams uh, of thousands of people in D.C. with a piece of life tape on their mouths with the word life. You've probably seen those. We did that 12 years ago, January. We stood there in front of that Supreme Court, and we've been standing there for 12 years because it was brilliant wisdom because nobody can argue with silence. In fact, the National Org Organization for Women Leaders said this is brilliant strategy, why? It's silent prayer for those who have no voice. The media took it up and blasted it all over the world. They don't know, like what we stand for, but they're actually promoting the movement because we got authority over the media by divine revelation. Put a piece of life tape on our mouths, as simple as that, praying, put a life band on, because of a dream, I've pondered this. What if, when we stood there in front of the Supreme Court 12 years ago, what if I thought that that life tape dream was just a pizza dream? Most people would not have done something like that, but I believed it was God. I, sometimes we need to really soberly look at our dreams. And, 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 and take each symbol and polish them and say, what are they saying? Because there's a treasure of revelation hidden but wanting to be found. Come on. It's, it's stunning. Oh, in fact, let me just pray for you right now because wherever I go, I pray for people to get dreams. Is that okay? One time a lady came to me. She says, I've never spoken tongues. And I've never had a dream. I said, okay, let's pray. Lord, give her a dream and have her speak in tongues. She came back the next week. I said, do you have a dream? She, yes, she had a dream. I was speaking in tongues and I woke up speaking in tongues. <laughs> Lift your hands and I'm going to pray. God, loose the dream language of heaven on the community of heaven on earth. In Jesus' name, release dreams. I want you to reach up. You don't have to feel it. I receive. In the name of Jesus. We receive, we expect to hear the voice of God. Raise up a whole new level of prophets because we've treated this thing as holy. We begin to tap into a whole new dimension of wisdom and revelation in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's shout to God for that. Amen. Amen. That is totally awesome. You're looking at, you know, Bill Johnson and Benny Hinn and Lou Engle and uh, some young ministers asking them questions on that panel. And when you think about it, you think about what the Lord told us in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. He tells us right out front. He says, in the last days. This is like the last days language. In the last days, says, the Lord says, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will have dreams. I mean, dreams, visions, and prophecy. And you think about everything that we're doing, even on VFN television and the VFN Dream Center. And, you know, we don't do anything unless God says, to, tells us to do it. And he's, he's been revealing these things in dreams. Lord, show me stadiums filled with multitude of people crying out to God. And he's shown me, you know, the church turning back to family again. And all of a sudden we truly have family and spiritual mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. And we're moving out of that whole organizational orphanage kind of concept and moving into fathers and mothers and family. And, and in the, the midst of that, the Holy Spirit is just moving. And it's, it's the love we have for each other and we have for Jesus Christ that reveals how much the world is loved by God. And, and these are some of the, just some of the things uh, the Lord has shown. The Lord showed me specifically uh, in October of 2016 that a man by the name of Donald J. Trump would be the next president of the United States. He told me that that he would be welcoming people in from all over the country again, that the White House would be back in the hands of the people again. He showed me that this president would be a friend of Christians and a friend of the church. Guess what? That's exactly what happened. Now I just want to pray right now that God would begin to release dreams over you, that you would no longer just say, it's just a dream, but you would begin to write down and treat the Word of God, the voice of God. Job 33, read it when you get a chance. He says, does not God speak to a man? Does he not speak to him in his deep sleep and warn him? I mean, God speaks to us in many different ways, but also through dreams and visions. And you should check them out with the Word of God. And, you know, bring them to your pastor or whoever's an authority uh, over you in the church and say, listen, this is what God's saying to me. 
but and, 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 and relate to folks who actually believe that God does speak. Because God has a plan. God has a plan for His people, and He reveals it. This is what He says in the last days. He says in the book of Revelation that when we uh, hear the, what the Spirit is saying to the churches, then all of a sudden He'll direct us here, He'll direct us here, and He'll keep us out of trouble. It's very exciting. It's an adventure to be able to walk with God. This was a powerful panel. You had Lou Engle, you had Bill Johnson, and you had Ben, ben Hinn. Hinn. I mean, and, spiritual fathers. I mean, yeah. This is amazing. And the young ministers are ask, asking them questions, and, and I think... You know, I can understand, you know, where they're saying, quit calling what God says just a dream. Yeah. And you how know? many people discredit the voice of God saying it's a pizza dream or yeah. whatever. Right. And it's really God speaking to them. We've been pretty blessed in the aspect that the Lord's been speaking to us for quite a while we've, in these dreams. And we've always honored what God yes. said, you know. And, and one of the ways you honor is to write the dream down, yeah. write what God is saying. Did you write it down? Oh, I didn't have time. <laughs> The creator of the universe is speaking to you, and you don't have the time to write it down. I don't have a, I don't think to write it down. Get a journal. Listen, we have one for you. If you don't yeah. have a journal, you know, request one, and we'll, you know, if I could probably for an offering or whatever, how much, you know, we'd send you a journal. But you get an abiding plan. Yes. You know, part of, part of, you know, uh, showing that we care about somebody is spending time with them and remembering what they say. You know, and if we care about God, it's not just talking to God all the time. It's listening to Him, and we call that abiding. John 15, Jesus tells us in the Gospel of John chapter 15, that you can't even do anything outside of an abiding relationship with Him. But if you abide in Him and He abides in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. We're called to bear fruit, much fruit and fruit that lasts, That's showing right. ourselves to be His disciples. In other words, showing that we're actually connected to Him. We have a relationship. He's speaking to us. We know His voice, right? His sheep know His voice. John 10. His, his voice is, is so important for us to understand that. And one way he does that is through dreams. And if you get a pen and you get a journal and get your an abiding plan, go to iabide.org. It's free. Get it. Children are doing it. Older folks are doing it. People all, all the way across the world are doing it. All the way from Australia oh, to yes. South Africa to all over America, Canada, the world. I just can't name all the places right now. And we're excited about you abiding if you already signed up for it. And we encourage you, if you haven't, to go to iabide.org and get your free plan because if somebody if you're talking to somebody who's writing down what you're saying you're going like ah, you know that's they, they that's they, important that's important they're going to listen can you imagine having employees you call an employee meeting in and you start telling your employees listen i got a vision for the company this is where we're going to go and they pull out pencil and they start writing down everything you're saying yeah i mean that owner what's that owner going to feel like valued important respected yeah you know and and trustworthy right and, yeah absolutely and what i found is the more that you write mm -hmm. And you're faithful to write, rather, right. the more God will give you. Yeah. And, and, you know, don't get upset when he reveals to you some things going on that you're thinking, you know, I got it one time. I thought, I was so upset what God was showing me because he's showing me what's going mm -hmm. on. And the Lord basically told me, listen, if, if you're going to be upset when I share with you what's taking place, I'm not going to share with you anymore. Because yeah. I was taking it on and yeah. I was, instead of, well, I just need to pray about this. Because you'd oh. be... Hey, by the way, you'd be really surprised what God's saying about you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And sometimes <laughs> the dreams... That's you get into the conversation, yeah. <laughs> right? And sometimes the dreams will come so often and so many times that at, at different hours of the night or yes. in the morning that I remember saying one time, oh, this is too much. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then they stopped coming for a while. And right. I said, Lord, you can wake me up anytime you want because right. I want to hear your voice. Right. Yeah. So. And so, you know, one way to do it too, if it's the middle of the night, you know, record your dream. I thought yeah. it's so funny. You know, if you if you live with a dreamer, the one that God speaks to in dreams, you can imagine the wife is in bed and the husband gets these dreams from God and, you know, things that God shows you is pictures and images and he speaks to different things. And so all of a sudden she's sleeping, she hears her husband stir and he's trying to reach over and grab a tape recorder and all she hears is like, the world's coming to an end, there's going to be an earthquake that cuts through the Madrid's fault, you know, all these different, yeah. you know, all this, can you imagine the, the thoughts that go on? But it's amazing. I mean, God has spoken to us, you know, about the, the, the world. He's spoken to us about our government leaders. He's spoken to us about local government leaders oh, yeah. and things that are going on that we can't even share, oh, yeah. but we can pray about. Uh, he's talked to us about our own families. He's warned people about where the enemy's trying to take their, their relationship and is putting a spirit of divorce on that relationship and literally tells the other spouse, this is what the enemy's trying to do. Mm. And, he's, and he or she's able to go in there and begin to come against that and to be able to stop it. This is what God does. God reveals the strategies of the enemies. He reveals secrets to us. You know, Proverbs 1 talks about this. If we just would have listened to him, mm. responded to his rebuke, he would have actually um, you know, shared with us, us his secrets and we'd be safe. 
and we're safe when we listen to his voice and we and you listen and didn't do what he, he says. He said that's, that's, on you yeah, to do, that's right? the important step. Yeah. Thank you for watching VFN TV. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com.